Deep Faith, How to Transform Your Life with God's Faith Written and published by God Daily News Introduction Did you know that 77% of world populations identify as religious, but only a fraction of them report a deep, transformative faith? You're about to begin a journey that will take you beyond mere identification to immersion in God's Word. You will discover how to meaningfully incorporate the Bible's lessons into your everyday life by using it as a guide. Imagine the freedom that comes from fully comprehending and living out James 1 verse 22, being a doer of the word, not just a hearer. Curious how this transformation might look for you? Stick around, you're in for an enlightening journey. Chapter 1. The Power of Unwavering Faith In the domain of theology, the power of unwavering faith, often seen as a rock-solid certainty in divine providence, can serve as a beacon guiding you through the darkest and most tumultuous times of your life. This faith, which is based on a deep trust in the divine, is more than just a passive acceptance of your fate, it is an active, dynamic engagement with the spiritual realm that has the power to fundamentally alter your reality. Faith, according to centuries of theological scholarship, is a deliberate stride toward a profound truth rather than a blind jump into the unknown. It's a conscious decision you make, a potent force that can move mountains in your life. When you're rooted in unshakable faith, life's storms can't topple you. With the conviction that a divine plan is unfolding, even when you can't see it, you're not just surviving, you're thriving. Faith, in its purest form, is transformative. It's not about clinging to dogmatic beliefs, it's about embracing the mystery of the divine, leaning into the uncertainty, and trusting that you're held within the loving embrace of a higher power. This faith doesn't shield you from life's hardships, but it provides you with inner strength and resilience. It illuminates your path, offering hope in the face of despair, peace amidst chaos. In essence, unwavering faith is a sacred, intimate dialogue with the divine, a confirmation of the power of belief in shaping your reality. It's a beacon of hope, a catalyst for change, and a confirmation of the indomitable human spirit. Unwavering faith, thus, isn't just a theological concept, it's a life-affirming, transformative power that can redefine your existence. Chapter 2. Cultivating a Deeper Relationship with God Cultivating a deeper relationship with God requires more than merely adhering to religious rituals, it demands an open heart, a willing spirit, and a commitment to personal spiritual growth. It's about fostering a genuine bond with the divine, a connection that transcends the superficiality of routine worship. The first step to deepening your relationship with God is through prayer. But not simply recited words or formulaic expressions, rather, Prayer is an intimate dialogue. It's you, expressing your deepest thoughts, fears, and hopes to God, and listening, truly listening, for His response. This form of prayer, more akin to a heartfelt conversation than a ritual, fosters a profound sense of connection with God. Reading and reflecting on the Bible is another critical aspect. The scriptures serve as a spiritual guidebook, offering wisdom and insights into God's nature and His will. As you explore the Bible, endeavor to comprehend its teachings at a deeper level. Ask questions, seek answers, and let God's Word resonate within your heart and mind. Lastly, embody the teachings of Christ in your daily life. Love your neighbor, forgive those who've wronged you, and aim for righteousness. Living according to God's principles is an act of faith that reinforces your connection with Him. Chapter 3 Overcoming Doubts and Fears Through Faith Numerous believers grapple with doubts and fears, yet through deep faith, you can surmount these challenges. Encountering doubts isn't a sign of weak faith, it's a natural part of your spiritual journey. Your faith doesn't absolve you of fears or doubts but provides a framework to confront them. In the biblical narrative, many stalwarts of faith face doubts. For instance, Thomas doubted Christ's resurrection until he touched Christ's wounds. Yet, he's not vilified, instead, his doubts led him to a deeper faith. This underscores the theological perspective that doubts aren't inherently detrimental to faith. They can, paradoxically, 
deepen it. Fear, too, is commonplace. It's human to fear the unknown, the future, or even God's judgment. Here, the Apostle Paul's words in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 offer solace, For God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. This verse emphasizes that your faith should empower you, not instill fear. How do you navigate these doubts and fears? One method is through prayer. James 1 verses 5 to 6 encourages believers to ask God for wisdom in their doubts, believing that God will provide. Further, immersing yourself in God's Word, seeking understanding through study and meditation, can dispel fears and doubts, replacing them with trust and assurance. Chapter 4 Unlocking the Transformative Potential of Belief Harnessing the power of deep belief can bring about transformative changes in your life, shaping your spiritual journey in profound ways. The core of this transformation lies in the recognition of faith as an active, dynamic force, rather than a passive acceptance of religious dogma. Theologians often liken this to the concept of living faith, a belief that isn't merely professed, but profoundly lived and experienced. Belief, in its transformative potential, isn't simply an intellectual assent to certain doctrines but a radical reorientation of one's life towards the divine. Such a belief is transformative because it fundamentally alters your perceptions, attitudes, and actions. It's a shift from the secular worldview to a God-centered perspective, where God's will and purposes take precedence over personal desires and ambitions. The Bible underscores this transformative potential of belief. Romans 12 verse 2, for example, exhorts you not to conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This verse points to a transformative belief, a belief that results in a renewed mind and a transformed life. The key to activating this transformative potential lies in deepening your understanding of God, cultivating a personal relationship with Him, and allowing His Word to shape your beliefs and actions. As you grow in your faith, you'll find that your beliefs have a profound impact on your life, leading to a spiritual transformation that transcends human understanding. This is the power and the beauty of deep, transformative belief. Chapter 5 Applying Biblical Principles to Daily Life In light of your deepening faith, applying biblical principles to daily life becomes not just a religious exercise, but a transformative journey towards divine alignment. This process of alignment requires an active engagement and constant communion with the Word of God. The Holy Scripture, hence, becomes your guide, not merely a source of reference. You might question, how can one apply these principles practically? It starts with understanding the teachings of Jesus Christ, the central figure of the Bible. His life and teachings provide a model for how to live a life rooted in love, forgiveness, and justice. You're encouraged to reflect His character in your actions, in your words, and in your relationships. In the Old Covenant, the Ten Commandments serve as a moral framework. These laws aren't just antiquated rules, they're timeless truths about human nature and ethical behavior. They can guide your decision-making, helping you discern right from wrong, even in complex situations. The Epistles of Paul, meanwhile, offer insights on living in community. They teach us about humility, patience, and the importance of unity within diversity. These teachings can help you navigate social situations, working relationships, even family dynamics. Applying biblical principles to daily life isn't about literal adherence to ancient customs, but interpreting and integrating these principles into your modern context. It's about living out your faith in tangible, meaningful ways. It's about transforming not just your life, but the lives of those around you with the love, hope, and truth found in God's Word. Chapter 6 Developing a Mindset of Gratitude As you continue on your transformative journey, cultivating a mindset of gratitude emerges as the next essential step in deepening your faith. Gratitude, in theological discourse, is an acknowledgement of God's love, goodness, and grace towards humanity. It's a disposition that transcends mere thanksgiving for temporal blessings, it's a profound recognition of God's providence in your life. 
Understanding gratitude biblically is pivotal in cultivating this mindset. Scripture is abundant with expressions of gratitude, from the psalmist's exultant praises to Paul's admonition in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18, in everything give thanks. These aren't mere suggestions, but divine commands that reflect God's desire for His children to live in continual appreciation of His goodness. Cultivating this mindset isn't an instantaneous process. It requires consistent practice and a deep understanding of God's character. When you grasp the depth of God's love for you, gratitude naturally flows from your heart. You're not just thankful for what He's done, but for who He is, your Creator, Sustainer, and Redeemer. It's also important to note that gratitude is more than an emotional response, it's a spiritual discipline. It requires intentional effort, constant reflection on God's Word, and an open heart to recognize God's hand in your life. As you nurture this mindset, you'll notice a profound transformation in your perspective, attitude, and overall faith journey. Chapter 7 Fostering Spiritual Resilience in Challenging Times Even the most devout believer will inevitably face times of adversity, and it's during these challenging periods that fostering spiritual resilience becomes essential to maintaining and deepening your faith. This resilience isn't about moving through hardship, but rather pondering through it with grace, drawing strength from your faith in God. Spiritual resilience is rooted in the understanding that our trials aren't pointless. They can serve as catalysts for growth, molding us into the image of Christ. James 1 verses 2-4 eloquently underscores this point, encouraging us to regard trials as joy because they produce perseverance, leading to maturity and completeness. By regularly partaking in spiritual disciplines like prayer, Bible study, and fellowship, you can cultivate spiritual resilience. These practices connect us intimately with God, equipping us with wisdom and strength to endure hardships. Remember, spiritual resilience isn't a static state but a dynamic process. It's something that needs to be nurtured over time. Chapter 8 Surrendering to God's Divine Plan Often, surrendering to God's divine plan means recognizing that you're not the architect of your life and that God's wisdom surpasses your own understanding. This acknowledgement isn't a sign of weakness but a demonstration of true faith and humility. It's an understanding that you're a part of a grand design, a cog in the machine of divine orchestration. Theologically, surrender is a central tenet of Christian faith. It reflects an acceptance of God's sovereignty, echoing the sentiments of Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He'll make your paths straight. This surrender doesn't mean passive resignation but active engagement with God's will. Analytically, surrendering to God's plan involves a process of self-emptying, a kenosis, akin to Christ's self-emptying in Philippians 2 verse 7. It's a letting go of your ego, your plans, your desires, not because they're inherently wrong, but because you trust that God's plan for your life is ultimately better, even if it doesn't seem so in the moment. Scholarly perspectives on surrender often emphasize its transformative potential. By surrendering, you're allowing God to take control, to mold you, and to use you for His divine purposes. It's not about losing yourself, but about finding your true self in God. Ultimately, surrendering to God's divine plan is about embracing a faith that's deep, transformative, and rooted in trust. Chapter 9 Embracing the Joy of Answered Prayer While surrendering to God's divine plan invites profound transformation, another layer of depth and richness in your faith journey emerges when you embrace the joy of answered prayer. Answered prayer, in the theological sphere, can be viewed as an affirmation of God's active presence in your life. It's not merely about the materialization of your requests, rather, it's a divine interaction that deepens your spiritual connection with God. When you perceive answered prayers as God's personalized messages, you start to experience a joy that transcends the mere fulfillment of your desires. The joy you feel doesn't spring from the answered prayer per se, but from the realization of God's intimate care for you. This joy is best understood in the context of the Apostle Paul's words in Philippians 4 verses 6-7, Do not be anxious about anything, 
but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Embracing this joy requires a shift in perspective. It's about seeing answered prayer not as a transactional event, but as a relational encounter with God. As you align your will with His and trust in His providence, you'll be able to genuinely rejoice in His answers, whether they come in the form you expect or not. In this way, the joy of answered prayer becomes an integral part of your deepening faith journey. Chapter 10 Discovering Purpose and Meaning Through Faith When you explore the depths of your faith, you will discover that it acts like a compass, pointing you in the direction of a meaningful and purposeful existence. As you journey through the labyrinth of existence, faith not only provides direction but also infuses your everyday actions with significance, transforming mundane tasks into purposeful endeavors. Your faith isn't a mere abstract concept, it's an active, dynamic force that shapes your perception of the world around you. It's through this lens that you discern your divine purpose. This purpose isn't a predestined blueprint inscribed in the heavens, but rather a co-creative process between you and the divine. The Bible states in Proverbs 16 verse 9, In their hearts humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. This biblical passage emphasizes the collaborative nature of purpose discovery, where your aspirations meet divine guidance. Moreover, faith imbues your life with profound meaning. Amidst the uncertainty and chaos of life, faith stands firm as a beacon of hope, pushing back existential despair. The Apostle Paul in Romans 8 verse 28 reminds us, and it's evident that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who've been called according to His purpose. Therefore, even the trials and tribulations serve a higher purpose, furthering your spiritual growth and deepening your faith. In essence, faith is your spiritual GPS, illuminating your path towards purpose and meaning. It's a transformative journey that requires openness, humility, and courage. By embracing faith, you're not only co-creating life but also experiencing it with the divine, a truly empowering and enlightening experience. Chapter 11 Building a Solid Foundation of Biblical Knowledge To strengthen your faith journey, it's essential that you lay a solid foundation of biblical knowledge. This isn't about memorizing verses or chapters, but about understanding the key themes, the historical context, and the theological principles that underpin the Bible. Dive into the old writings, the foundation of biblical theology, where you'll find the origins of creation, the history of Israel, and the prophecies pointing to Christ. The wisdom books will provide insights into the human condition, while the prophetic writings will challenge you to live righteous lives. The New Writings, on the other hand, is the culmination of God's revelation. The life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ are made clear in the Gospels. The Epistles offer theological reflections and practical guidelines for Christian living. The Book of Revelation, though complex, provides hope for the future. Understanding the Bible isn't a solo expedition. You're encouraged to join a Bible study group, seek guidance from pastors or theologians, and use commentaries and Bible handbooks. Remember, the Holy Spirit is your ultimate teacher, illuminating the Word, and guiding you into all truth. Biblical knowledge isn't an end in itself. It's a tool to know God better, to understand His character, and His plan for humanity. As you grow in knowledge, you'll also grow in faith, love, and obedience. This is the essence of a deep faith journey, one anchored in a solid foundation of biblical understanding. In the next chapter, we'll explore how this knowledge helps you overcome temptation and maintain moral integrity. Chapter 12 Overcoming Temptation and Maintaining Moral Integrity In your journey of faith, you'll certainly encounter temptations that challenge your moral integrity, but a deep understanding of biblical principles equips you to combat these trials effectively. Temptation, as you'll find, isn't an anomaly, but rather, an inherent aspect of human existence. Even Christ, in His humanity, wasn't exempt, Hebrews 4 verse 15. 
This reinforces the notion that temptation isn't a sin, succumbing to it is. Your ability to overcome temptation heavily relies on your relationship with God and understanding of His Word. The Apostle Paul, in his epistle to the Ephesians, highlights the importance of putting on the full armor of God to resist the devil's schemes, Ephesians 6 verse 11. You're not fighting flesh and blood, but principalities and powers that require divine intervention. Maintaining moral integrity, on the other hand, is a conscious commitment to uphold and live by the moral and ethical standards set forth in the Bible. It's the crux of Proverbs 11 verse 3, which attests to the stabilizing role of integrity in one's life. It's an ongoing process, one that demands constant self-evaluation and correction in light of God's Word. Chapter 13 Finding Comfort and Strength in Scripture Scripture serves as a wellspring of comfort and strength, offering you solace in times of sorrow and fortitude during trials. Its timeless wisdom and eternal truths provide a sanctuary where you can retreat to find peace amidst life's storms. The Bible, a sacred text revered by billions, invites you to seek solace and strength in its profound promises and divine declarations. The Psalms, for instance, are replete with assurances of God's enduring love and unwavering commitment to His people. They encourage you to find comfort in God's presence, assuring you that, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I'll fear no evil, for you're with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me, Psalm 23 verse 4. This verse, like many others, serves as a spiritual balm, soothing your troubled soul and bolstering your faith in God's providence. Scripture also offers strength, emboldening you to persevere through adversity. In the New Covenant, Paul exhorts believers to be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power, Ephesians 6 verse 10. This verse calls you to draw strength not from your own resources, but from the limitless power of God. It invites you to lean on His strength, trusting that He'll uphold you in times of weakness. Chapter 14 Navigating Life's Challenges with Unwavering Conviction As you draw comfort and strength from the Bible, you'll find yourself better equipped to face life's challenges with an unwavering conviction. This unwavering conviction, deeply rooted in faith, isn't merely a passive acceptance of whatever life throws your way, rather it's an active assertion of your trust in God's plan. Life invariably presents us with trials and tribulations. These challenges, however, shouldn't be seen as obstacles to your faith, but opportunities to reaffirm it. The Bible, in James 1 verses 2-4, encourages us to view it as pure joy when we face trials, for the testing of our faith develops perseverance, leading to spiritual maturity and completeness. Your conviction is the bedrock upon which you navigate these trials. It's not an anchor that holds you back, but a compass that guides you through. In the face of adversity, your faith need not waver, for as stated in 1 Corinthians 16 verse 13, be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, be men of courage, be strong. Hold steadfastly to this conviction, not out of blind allegiance, but because of the experiential knowledge of God's faithfulness. Remember, God's promise in Romans 8 verse 28, and we recognize that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who've been called according to His purpose. Chapter 15 Developing a Habit of Consistent Devotion Regularly immersing yourself in prayer and worship, you can cultivate a habit of consistent devotion, which serves as a fundamental practice in deepening your faith and trust in God's providence. This commitment to consistent devotion isn't just a religious routine, but a spiritual discipline that shapes your character, strengthens your faith, and deepens your relationship with God. Theologically, consistent devotion is about surrendering your will to God's will, a concept deeply embedded in Christian doctrine. Here, you're not simply praying or reading the Bible, you're engaging in a divine dialogue, a sacred conversation with the Creator. Through this ongoing engagement, you're allowing God's Word to permeate your thoughts, influence your actions, and guide your decision-making process. From a scholarly perspective, Consistent devotion is a form of spiritual formation. It's primarily about shaping your worldview, your values, and your ethics in conformity with God's Word. It's a transformational process that involves your mind, 
your heart, and your will. In practical terms, it requires commitment, discipline, and surrender. It's about setting aside a specific time each day for prayer, meditation, and Bible study. It's about consciously choosing to prioritize your relationship with God over your worldly concerns. Chapter 16 Recognizing and Responding to God's Guidance While developing consistent devotion shapes your character and strengthens your faith, it's equally important to cultivate an understanding of how to recognize and respond to God's guidance in your life. God's guidance is often a subtle whisper rather than an audible shout, calling you to discern His voice amidst the cacophony of life's demands. To recognize God's guidance, you need to develop spiritual discernment, which is a keen sensitivity to God's presence in your life. It's acquired through prayer, meditation, and the study of God's Word. The Bible says in Romans 12 verse 2, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. This verse suggests that discernment comes from a mind that's constantly renewed by God's Word. Responding to God's guidance, however, requires a heart of obedience. It's not enough to merely recognize God's guidance, you must also obey His commands. In John 14 verse 15, Jesus says, If you love me, keep my commands. Love for God propels you to obey His guidance. It's a step of faith that requires courage and humility but yields the fruit of obedience, peace, and joy. Chapter 17 Cultivating a Spirit of Forgiveness and Compassion Cultivating a spirit of forgiveness and compassion is a key cornerstone in your journey of deep faith. This spirit doesn't evolve overnight but requires a conscious, deliberate effort towards understanding God's love and emulating it in your daily interactions. Ephesians 4 verse 32 instructs, Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Forgiveness means letting go of the need for revenge and relieving the offender of their obligation to you. It's important to understand that forgiveness doesn't negate the gravity of the offense, rather it mirrors God's mercy towards us, as we see in the parable of the unmerciful servant, Matthew 18 verses 21-35. When you truly forgive, you're acting in obedience to God's Word, thereby deepening your faith. Compassion, on the other hand, is an empathetic response to the suffering of others. It's a selfless act that reflects God's love for humanity. In the parable of the Good Samaritan, Luke 10 verses 25-37, Jesus exemplifies compassion, urging us to go and do likewise. Forgiveness and compassion are interrelated. While forgiveness heals past wounds, compassion builds bridges for future relationships. Both are essential in your spiritual development and are a proof of the transformative power of deep faith. Chapter 18 Balancing Faith and Practical Everyday Living As you consciously foster forgiveness and compassion, it becomes natural to question how these spiritual virtues fit into the practical aspects of your daily life, thereby bringing us to the challenge of balancing faith with everyday living. Living a life of faith doesn't mean neglecting your earthly duties or responsibilities. It's about integrating your faith into your everyday tasks and decisions. In Matthew 22 verse 21, Jesus said, Render thus unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. This verse suggests a necessary balance between duties to God and responsibilities to the world. Understanding that faith isn't an escape from the world but a means to engage with it in a more profound, meaningful way is crucial. In practical terms, this balance could mean setting aside time for prayer and meditation, even amid a busy schedule. It could also mean applying biblical principles such as honesty, humility, and love in your interactions with others. This balance doesn't imply that you'll never face challenges or difficulties, but your faith can provide a steady moral compass to navigate life's storms. Balancing faith and practical everyday living necessitates wisdom and discernment, which can be nurtured through consistent prayer and study of the Word. It's a dynamic process that evolves as you grow in your relationship with God. It's about being in the world but not of the world, 
as John 17 verse 16 suggests. It's about letting your light shine in a world that so desperately needs it, without letting the world dim your light. Chapter 19 Empowering Others Through Sharing Your Faith Journey Your faith journey, rich with personal experiences and transformative moments, can serve as a powerful tool for inspiring and empowering others. As a demonstration of God's grace, your narrative can encourage others to deepen their faith, even during times of trial and tribulation. By sharing your experiences, you're not just recounting events, but rather, you're illuminating the path of faith for others, providing them a beacon of hope and a roadmap to spiritual growth. Sharing your faith journey isn't just advantageous for the receiver, it's also a form of spiritual discipline for you. As you reflect on and articulate your experiences, you're encouraged to see God's hand in your life, which further deepens your own faith. You're also practicing vulnerability, a virtue extolled in scriptures like 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9, where Paul glorifies in his weaknesses because it's then that Christ's power rests on him. Moreover, by sharing your journey, you're engaging in a form of discipleship. Matthew 28 verses 19 to 20 calls us to go and make disciples of all nations. Sharing your faith journey can be a practical application of this command, a way to spread the good news of God's transformative power in your life. However, remember that sharing your faith journey shouldn't be a sermon but a dialogue. Recognizing the importance of listening to others, respecting their spiritual journey, and understanding that God works uniquely in each person's life. In this way, you not only empower others but also cultivate an environment of mutual growth and understanding. Chapter 20 Discovering the Power of Intercessory Prayer While empowering others through your faith journey offers a path for spiritual growth, it's intercessory prayer that often magnifies this power, serving as a conduit for divine intervention and a manifestation of the communal nature of our faith. This prayer, standing in the gap for others, is a tangible expression of love for your neighbor, and it has the potential to transform lives. Intercessory prayer, as evidenced in Scripture, is a practice that connects us with God's will and His merciful nature. You see, when you intercede, you're not just sending up requests, you're aligning your spirit with the divine, invoking the power of faith in a way that moves beyond mere words. Consider Moses' intercession for Israel in Exodus 32 verses 11-14. Moses stands before God, pleading for mercy on behalf of a wayward people. His prayers aren't selfish or self-serving, they're fueled by a deep love and concern for others. This reflects a significant aspect of intercessory prayer, it's not about you. It's about surrendering to the divine will, advocating for others, and trusting in God's power. Furthermore, Paul, in 1 Timothy 2 verse 1, exhorts believers to make petitions, prayers, intercession and thanksgiving for all people. This underscores the importance of intercessory prayer within Christian practices. It's an act of humility, recognizing that we can do nothing without God's intervention. Discover the power of intercessory prayer. Embrace it as a spiritual discipline that deepens your faith, shifts your focus outward, and allows you to partake in God's transformative work in the lives of others. Chapter 21 Overcoming Adversity and Finding Renewed Hope Often in life, you'll find yourself facing challenges and adversities that may seem insurmountable, yet it's precisely in these moments that the seeds of renewed hope are sown through deep faith. It's not uncommon to question why you must endure such hardship, but remember, the purpose is often hidden within the pain. God's intention isn't to break you, but to mold you, to refine your faith like gold tested in fire. 1 Peter 1 verse 7. In the book of Job, we see how a man of God overcame adversity through unwavering faith. Job's faith wasn't predicated on his circumstances but on his deep, unshakable belief in God's sovereignty. Even when he lost everything, Job stated, Though he slay me, yet will I hope in him. Job 13 verse 15. Job's story is a powerful confirmation to the power of faith in times of adversity. When you're in the midst of trials, you can find solace in Scripture. Take, for instance, Isaiah 43 verse 2, where God promises, When you pass through the waters, 
I'll be with you, and when you pass through the rivers, they'll not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you won't be burned, the flames won't set you ablaze. This verse doesn't promise an absence of hardship, but it does promise God's presence and protection during those times. Chapter 22 Aligning Your Will with God's Will Moving through life's trials, it becomes essential to align your desires and intentions with God's will, an act that not only deepens your faith but also fosters spiritual peace and resilience. This alignment isn't about passive obedience, but rather a conscious choice to submit your will, recognizing that God's perspective transcends your own. It's acknowledging His sovereignty and trusting in His wisdom, even when your own understanding is limited. Aligning your will with God's isn't an overnight process, but a lifelong journey of spiritual growth. It starts with a commitment to seek God's will in every decision, big or small. This commitment isn't just about seeking God's will when you're facing a significant decision, but also in your day-to-day -day living, how you spend your time, the words you speak, and the thoughts you entertain. The Bible, in Romans 12 verse 2, admonishes, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. This scripture suggests a transformative process, one that involves your mind's renewal through the Word of God. Ultimately, aligning your will with God's is about cultivating a deep faith that transforms your life, shaping your character, guiding your decisions, and influencing your interactions. It's yielding to God's authority, trusting in His love, and living in accordance to His Word, thus reflecting His character in your life. Chapter 23 Embracing the Transformative Power of Repentance In your journey towards aligning your will with God's, embracing the transformative power of repentance becomes an essential step, marking a significant turning point in your spiritual growth. Repentance, derived from the Greek term metanoia, denotes a change of mind and heart. It isn't merely feeling remorse but involves a complete U-turn, a conscious decision to turn away from sin and align yourself with God's righteousness. The biblical concept of repentance, as articulated in Acts 3 verse 19, is a call to repent, then, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. This illustrates the transformative power of repentance, it's not just about acknowledging your sinfulness but actively seeking God's mercy to wipe out your sins. Repentance is also a manifestation of God's grace. It's God who grants repentance as indicated in 2 Timothy 2 verse 25, in the hope that God will grant them repentance leading them to a knowledge of the truth. The power to repent, then, is a divine gift, enabling you to break free from the bondage of sin. However, repentance isn't a one-time event but a continuous process. It's an ongoing cycle of sin, confession, repentance, and forgiveness, as 1 John 1 verse 9 demonstrates, if we confess our sins, He's faithful, and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, embracing repentance is about acknowledging your need for God's forgiveness, accepting His grace, and continuously endeavoring for spiritual purity. It is a process of transformation that helps you get closer to God and grow in your faith. Chapter 24 Developing a Lifestyle of Worship and Praise Beginning a lifestyle of worship and praise is a profound way to cultivate and express your deep faith, serving as a spiritual compass guiding you towards a closer relationship with God. This approach isn't about simply attending church services or reciting prayers, it's about incorporating praise and worship into your daily life, making it a part of your very essence. Worship isn't just an activity, it's a state of being that recognizes God's omnipotence and your rightful place in His grand design. The Bible underscores this in Romans 12 verse 1, where Paul urges believers to offer their bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, this is true and proper worship. Praise, on the other hand, is an outward expression of your inner faith. It's an acknowledgement of God's goodness and a celebration of His deeds. The Psalms are replete with instances of praise, illustrating its importance in one's spiritual journey. You can cultivate this lifestyle of worship and praise in various ways. 
You can start by infusing your daily routines with moments of prayer and reflection, making conscious efforts to appreciate God's work in your life and the world around you. Moreover, you can foster a grateful heart, always thanking God for His blessings, big or small. Chapter 25 Leaving a Lasting Legacy of Faith You're now ready to explore the significant task of leaving a lasting legacy of faith. This involves imparting eternal values, inspiring future generations within your family, and embodying steadfast devotion. These three elements form the basis for a faith legacy that endures, impacting countless lives beyond your own. Laying a robust foundation of faith requires a thoughtful impartation of eternal values, which can form an enduring legacy that outlives your earthly existence. These principles, which have their origins in the Bible, serve as a moral compass that directs you toward leading a morally upright life. They aren't merely abstract concepts but living principles that permeate every aspect of life, shaping character and worldview. To impart these eternal values, firstly, you must internalize them. Embrace the teachings of the Bible and let them influence your thoughts, words, and deeds. You'd notice, as you practice these values, they'll become an integral part of who you are. Consequently, your life becomes a living testimony of these eternal values, which others can learn from. Secondly, actively teach these values. Don't assume they'll be automatically picked up. Engage in open dialogues, share your experiences, and provide biblical references to support your teachings. This way, you'll not only be imparting knowledge but also fostering a deeper understanding of these eternal values. Building a lasting legacy of faith that inspires generations isn't just about imparting values, it's about actively living out your faith, demonstrating its power and relevance in your daily interactions and decisions. Your dedication to faith, the way you handle trials, your response to God's Word, and your treatment of others all reflect the depth of your spiritual conviction. In Deuteronomy 6 verse 7, the Bible underscores the importance of teaching God's commandments to your children and talking about them when you sit at home, walk along the road, lie down, and rise up. This is more than just verbal instruction, it's about embodying and modeling a faith-filled life, a concept theologians term incarnational faith transmission. Your faith becomes a witness, speaking volumes to your family. In this way, you instill in them an enduring Christian worldview, shaping their perceptions and attitudes towards God, life, and the world. This process, which scholars call faith enculturation, guarantees that your faith legacy doesn't become a mere historical artifact, but a living, breathing, dynamic force that inspires and shapes generations. In cultivating this enduring Christian worldview, it's imperative that you constantly embody steadfast devotion in your lifelong walk of faith. The biblical narrative is abundant with examples of this unwavering commitment, such as Abraham's obedience to God, despite the trials he faced. Analytically speaking, your devotion isn't just about religious observance, but also about integrating Christian values into your daily life. The Apostle Paul, in Romans 12 verse 2, advises not conforming to the patterns of this world, but instead, being transformed by renewing your mind. This renewal, theologians suggest, is the essence of steadfast devotion. Scholarly interpretations emphasize that the embodiment of devotion isn't a passive act but rather an active engagement with God's Word and His will. It's about making faith an integral part of your life, even in the face of adversity or doubt. To leave a lasting legacy of faith, your devotion must be steadfast, resilient, and unyielding. It's about standing firm, as Ephesians 6 verse 13 advises, when you've done everything, to stand. In your journey of deep faith, remember, it's not just about hearing the word but living it. Let God's teachings, once a mere whisper, become a guiding shout in your life. Embrace the divine dance of repentance, align your will with His, and nurture an existence of worship. As you tread this path, you'll leave more than footsteps, you'll leave a legacy of faith that echoes into eternity. Thanks for listening.